thanks to all. Um, I would now like to open the floor to the audience. And before that, I'd just like to note that we have as, uh, amongst the audience uh, Firdaus Ahmed the Bangladeshi star and uh, Shiva Shishit, who's a producer for us. Thank you. So I guess since we started uh, 45 minutes or so late, I think we can uh, stretch uh, time. So uh, we have roughly 25 minutes to half an hour if the, you know, uh, Johnson, I, can you sort of keep the room for, yeah, okay. So we have half an hour so roughly for, for questions. The floor is yours. So as far well as this 100, 100 crore, 200 crore, 300 crore, that's the expansion of business model. This is happening in uh, our mainstream cinema. But the, the good part is that now we are having so many screens and multiplexes that there is a space for every kind of cinema. People can see the art cinema, parallel cinema, good cinema, bad cinema. Worse than So it is their choice. They have got time pass and they go. So they are patronizing all kind of films. It all depends on their taste. So you can say that people are more responsible than the cinema itself. If the people pay more money to Chennai Express than Lutera. So it's a people's choice, not a cinema choice. Right, sir? So, what good film is a good film. But when a good film like Bhag Mil Kamal also do, does 100 crore piece, and other films also do 100 crore piece. So, filmmakers, mainly he always tries that let me make a successful film as well as a good film. There are two things. Maybe you make a good films, then you make a blockbusters. But sometimes we always, like I want, good as well as blockbusters, which is tough proposition for us. So, sir, bless me, and I've been to both kind of <laughs> There is a similar situation in Bengal as well, in, uh, in that polarization of films which, uh, which score very highly at the box office, vis-a-vis -vis the films which are more art house and more parallel and uh, catered to more refined sensibilities. And of course, they are in the middle of the road movies, which do a fair bit of both, like mine. But uh, for all the Chennai expresses of the world, I am personally delighted. I I am really happy that this hundred crore club is formed, and uh, we keep on churning these uh, films over and over again. Uh, why I tell you? Because of cross subsidization, and I look at it from a very rational, clinical, economic perspective. Uh, there's something called a Keynesian multiplier in economics. You, you put in more investment in the uh, industry in terms of capacity. And uh, the moment you have films like Chennai Express, for example, I was actually uh, doing the color correction of my next film at Ad Labs. And uh, Rohit Chetty was doing his uh, Chennai Express color correction. I was just marveling at the number of uh, uh, colorists which have been increased in Ad Labs, number of screens, the equipments, 
which have increased in our ad caps. And all this has a trickle down effect on all the other kinds of movies which have been made. So, in a sense, uh, Chennai Express or Dabang is cost subsidizing Ship of Theseus as well. So, I, I, am, I am personally very happy and delighted about the thing, and I don't think there is any clash or conflict. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, it's like a typical botanical garden where you have a huge banyan tree, but you also have orchids all around it feeding off it. So, I think it's it's perfectly harmonious situation. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dan Lee. I'm a uh, public relations consultant. I was a public relations consultant to the IIM alumni in Singapore. It also happens that my father is a commercial uh, film director from Southeast Asia. Now, I just want to pick up on the point that, you know, India has been great for producing, uh, in, in terms of international dollar and cents, relatively low budgets, but we're seeing an increasing number of, if I, every time I watch Bollywood, I see, you know, the sets are becoming more sophisticated, you know, uh, stars are becoming more glamorous. And I notice, and I'm just picking up what you said, I, more money is going into the films. But is it, do you see a potential situation where Bollywood may be going the way of Hollywood, where it, it's going to reach a stage where you need to have 100 million US dollars, uh, then and it, you need the special effects. Uh, Shah Rukh Khan, who is not, I understand, is not a pauper by any standards. Uh, his successes may demand the salaries of the hawk, the uh, that the um, Hollywood stars are now demanding. And it becomes basically very difficult for small independent filmmakers to make money. I mean, do we see that? Then I have a question for Mr. Ong, since you are part of NBA. Yes, okay, do you, have a, do you see a situation where Singap is Singapore's, is it Singapore's policy to try and market ourselves as a film uh, hub? See, this question has been quite constant. The space for the good cinema in the expanding commercial cinema. There is a space. Now, if you look at it, the movies recently, which have done fairly good performance, is uh, they, uh, the day, the day, the day, uh, weekly dollar. There are so many movies which are high concept small budget movies, they were made uh, with the, uh, 10 crore rupees, but they did a business of 35, 40 crore rupees, four times more than the cost. So they just call it, they just call it profit, profit. But the movies like Chennai Express are made up about so 80 crore rupees. If it is doing 200 or 250 crore rupees, it's a four times again. So the D-Day, Made, uh, uh, made out of 10 crore rupees, doing 40 crore rupees. So where is the difference? So, but movie has to be good. And particularly the movies with the high concept has more responsibility to be good. Because you are talking something serious, not about it. Entertainment films also flop. They also are rejected. So the ratio is same according to me. It's not much difference. Good movies, with the high concept or art house films also do. Do good. Lodera has done very well. This business. Um, I think obviously Singapore is trying to also build a Singapore film industry. But the effort has all been on a very private basis. And they, they are these private individuals who started like Suji, you know, on his own out of passion, out of interest. And we have seen, I think, so far, two very successful producers. Uh, one, uh, of course, is, is Jack Neo, who after 10 years, uh, he has also received mention from the Prime Minister for his production that have made very big uh, blockbuster uh, box office uh, profits. And more recently, we had the other movie that uh, won uh, 
on a, a walk at the Cairns uh, Film Festival. So it's just the beginning, although Singapore had the film industry even before it became independent under the Shaw uh, organization when they had their studios here in Singapore. Uh, I, but we have still a long way to go and our local uh, media corp has been trying to get Hong Kong producers to come here to produce films and trying to fast forward our industry. Uh, we don't know. As we have managed in recent years to produce Olympic stars, maybe one day we might be successful too. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for uh, very interesting talks. Um, I'm Kunur Kripalani from the University of Hong Kong. And my question is basically uh, about the social change making aspect. I'd like to ask all the directors about the censor board, which seems to be the watchdog that governs um, um, the kinds of mores that the state considers permissible. So are these, is this something that is very high on a filmmaker's agenda? Is it something you give a lot of consideration to before you launch into a film? And how does this affect generally the filmmaking process? Thank you. Should there be a kind of a monitoring for artistic expression or should there not be? Because when you don't have censorship for other arts, why you have censorship for film or both? But having said that, I'll tell you the Indian censorship is quite lenient. It's not that strict when compared to other uh, censorship that exists in other countries. In Indian censorship, there are very few restrictions that you cannot, the violence and the sex are you know, not allowed. Then in the art you don't have to show everything in detail. You can always suggest it's implying, uh, impli impli sort of things. Whereas in other, some of the Latin American countries, the censorship is very strong with the political censorship. You cannot make sta statement against states, against the government that's in power. That is very dangerous. That's where that is really stifling. Uh, there are very few films made in India, especially the feature films, where they directly attack the state. So we don't know how the censorship would react if one makes that kind of film. Whereas the documentaries in India are where, you know, they're, they're, they're really world standards. The documentaries made in India are great you know, world standards and they attack the state very often, and some of the films are really banned, and uh, like Anand Prabhupada, he went to court and what is cleared. Uh, so you still have some, you know, place where you can really fight the censorship. But I have, sometimes, you know, I, in, in, in terms of ideas, I am uh, against any censorship. But if you really look at the way how Indian film industry, or film industry in most, most part of the world, the way how they function. And then I guess the thing is better they have the state put certain restrictions. Look at the way, uh, look at uh, Iranian cinema, Ira Iranian cinema. So they are probably the best today because they have found ways to express themselves in a very metaphorical way. So when there are certain restrictions, you will definitely the artists who try to find the mode of expression which can circumvent these things. When there are a lot of freedom, I don't think, you know, uh, look at the way how Japanese cinema went down when they said, uh, this one is really, you know, removed, the censorship is removed. The censorship is not by the government there, it's by the industry itself. The, which is a very ideal thing, and they have some kind of social responsibility there. So, if you are purely talking in terms of ideas, in terms of uh, this one, then I would say the censorship is bad. But if you ask me, 
which are the films which are really affected by the censorship, I would say there are no examples. I can't really think of you know, at least in some subcontinents I don't see. Religion, religion is a feature. There was a big, um, sorry, religion is also one aspect, right? A um, few months ago, there was a big censorship uh, fracas over some depictions on, uh, I think, one of Rajni Khan's films, if I'm not mistaken. Kamal Hassan's film. Kamal Hassan's film. Well, that's all because of the kind of publicity they gave. Well, my films attack religious dogmas very often. In fact, I made a film called Hasina, and everyone was very worried that how can you talk about being a Hindu, upper caste Hindu, how can you talk about certain practices that existed in Islamic religion? Well, my past, my film passed without any cuts. And in fact, uh, when the film was released, the mullahs and maulis, you know, they came to see the film. They wanted to know whether it's against their religion. And they were okay it. You know, it's direct attack on the religious system. But it also depends on how you are going to attack the whole thing. Is it very constructive or is it unnecessarily trying to criticize for its own sake? Well, that kind of, uh, uh, that's a kind of a censorship not by the state but by the extra constitutional body, which is, which has no legal sanctity at all. That's very dangerous. You can, anybody can form, a group can be formed and they, they start driving the focus against the film, the state bans it, which is, I would say, you know, it's quite dangerous. Yeah. Or, or, uh, let me add to it what Mr. said. The censorship is very much within ourselves. Censorship is very much within the society, within the nation. What you want to express, what is abusive, what is hurting to the other sens sens sensibility of the people, sensibility of the people, is also absolutely in the form. Where to any case, I can say that he was a very special man. I can't say what that's all. You know, I'm sitting here. So, whenever we go beyond the bounds of what is required, we go beyond the code of ethics, uh, code of particular language, uh, action. People reject the film. We are responsible if we go beyond that, if we go closer to the protective reality, protective expression. People will reject it. So, but people themselves have said nothing. No, no, we have this is film, I can't see this. I can't take my family. I can't see with the family. So, the censorship is very much in a filmmaker himself and in the audience as well as the government body. Government body is, uh, is there to see to it that there are certain bad elements who may not exploit. You know, selling vulgarity, or selling poor films, or going beyond the things. So there is a body work. Otherwise, I personally feel major censorship is with the people. Uh, the people never expected kissing scene in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Now they have started accepting. This is not no good thing. The values change, the people change, the change, style change, fashion change. So it's a different story. So it is always a social pattern which you know, give you a standard of expression in your movies. Thank you. Yeah, uh, potentially um, long answer because uh, recently there were uh, three or four meetings which happened with the Central Board of Film Certification uh, because the there were a lot of angst in Bengal about a few movies which were kind of banned and some cuts were suggested. So uh, there is a revising committee which has been formed recently led by, uh, on the basis of recommendations of a committee led by uh, Javed Dattarji. So we had a meeting, we had three meetings and a lot of things came out of uh, those meetings. First of all, uh, the word censor is a misnomer because what uh, CBFC is actually uh, ordained to do is provide certification. 
we, uh, we cannot, by law, uh, suggest that you cut uh, this portion of your film or your movie. What we can say is, on the basis of guidelines, we can say that this, ideally, this uh, should be watched by, which can, this cannot be watched by uh, uh, people of a certain age or below a certain age and all that. More like a rating system. Uh, but that has, over the years, those guidelines, uh, that law has been sort of diluted and in fact abused on a number of occasions. And in fact, uh, I would actually like to differ with Mr. Kastrovali on that point because I find the censor board uh, neither linear nor too tough, I just find it very random. Because uh, there are films which have been passed uh, on the basis of guidelines and those same guidelines have been used to uh, suggest cuts or uh, ban certain other films. Uh, recently there was this film called Kangal Marshat in Bengal, uh, directed by Shumon Mukhopadhyay, who is, is a very dear colleague of mine. This film is a scathing allegorical attack on uh, establishment and uh, on the ruling party and it takes uh, names and it uses images which are pretty see-through. I mean, there is not much of a metaphor in, in uh, that. Uh, but interestingly, it was a scathing attack on the ruling uh, Communist Party in Bengal. Uh, but as we all know, the, the Communist uh, Party is no more there in, in Bengal and we have the TMC. Very funnily, even the TMC government uh, put a hold or sort of banned the film. Uh, when political analysts thought that they would be all too glad to, you know, actually probably give it tax cuts or something. But uh, actually the reverse happened, which goes to show there is this fear, which is, there's this inherent fear uh, about a film uh, which can ignite opinions or ignite uh, uh, passion against the establishment, whoever, whatever might be the political color. So, on that basis, I, I think uh, the censor board, I, I do not support the guidelines or, or the way the censor board uh, sort of uh, operates often. Um, I can I can set my own example, my second film, by Shishrabu, uh, which was full of expletives and I went there and I was sure that they are going to create a brouhaha about it. They just let it go with just an adult certificate. And I said, wow, the sense of has come of age. My third film, Hemlock Society, which is meant for that uh, age group where people don't realize that uh, reasons can be silly for trying to end one's life, be it a bad result at an IIT uh, entrance exam or be it a fake relationship. They again said that it's an adulterated movie and people uh, below 18 can't watch it. And I tried to argue with them, saying that it is meant for people below 18, because people above 18 know that suicide is not the solution. It's for people from 12 to 18 this film is made, so you cannot actually rule out my target audience. But they were adamant and uh, I sort of uh, lost uh, the case. And then there were reference to uh, the military rule in Manipur uh, in the film and Love Society, which they had to beep. And I asked again that what is the problem if I talk about the military rule in Manipur? Uh, what does uh, Manipur exist? They said yes. I said does the military rule exist? They said yes. So why can't I have a sentence which says that there is a military rule in Manipur? Uh, they said no. It might spark off riots. So again, I come back to that same line: cinema as a social change maker. Sometimes uh, we tend to overestimate or the sensible especially, tries to overestimate the impact a film can have. And uh, I seriously, I, I seriously question, you think that this one line is going to spark off riots in Manipur? They said it might, so why take a chance? So going by that logic, I think, uh, well, what is the point of actually making a film? Or saying something, or writing a song, or writing one's blog? We all just might just shut up, because why take a chance? So, uh, I, I personally I have very strong views about censorship, and especially uh, when it comes to sex. Now, frontal nudity is, is, is uh, prohibited or banned in India. And so, going back to that logic, then we should uh, probably destroy most of our Khajuraho temples. Um, they are considered to be works of art, 
people go there and spend hours talking about them, glorifying them. And, uh, and the same thing uh, comes to um, uh, cinema, which is also supposedly an art form, or so I hear. Uh, so uh, then you, you suddenly become prudish and uh, Victorian and say that, sorry, no sex with Indians. So that, that, that kind of level silence is something which I really, I don't, I don't agree on. I have serious reservations about. Uh, we're really running out of time. I think we have time just for one. Okay, the last two questions. Just keep it very short. Hi, uh, my name is Rana Basutakur. Uh, we just launched a film production company. Uh, there are some basic uh, fundamental questions that are plaguing me often and uh, I'd like to address it very quickly to Srijit and also uh, Gaisa. Uh, while Srijit's film, Hemlock Society to my mind, has probably been his best so far, I personally feel so, I don't know if he'd agree. Uh, films often bring about a didactic change in societal reforms, norms, etc. We can talk to the cows come home on that. But given the commercial aspects of you know how a production house would like to support a film, uh, there have been sporadic efforts of uh, three idiots, or a Hemlock Society, or a 15 Park Avenue, or a Mene Gandhi Pune Mara, where uh, taboo subjects like, let's say, schizophrenia, or terminal illness, etc., has been addressed. Now, from point of view of, sir, you as a director, producer, and as a mentor who has a crucible like Wisting Woods, or Sriji as a director who would probably like to make more such films in the future, do you think there might be, uh, you, you spoke about the commission economics here. Do you think there might be some convergence of commercial success as well as uh, you know, mass acceptability of such subjects where uh, you cater to both ends of the spectrum? As a director, you feel nourished that you've ventured into something which is taboo. As a producer, you feel fine. You are doing some service to society because we are talking about films making a radical social change. While we can always talk about such intellectual subjects per se. Uh, do you think there would be some kind of a commercial uh, you know, compromise later, if not today? Could you also have the final question? So the the final question is that... Uh, 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 I think, sorry, yeah. Yeah. You wanted to ask a question. Uh, I think, uh, could, you just, could you just get both the questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what I wanted to ask is that uh, you started off by saying that uh, films do not have a full potential to bring about change because probably the message gets diffused. And uh, the filmmakers uh, mostly put it in an Indian context, but we are in Singapore. So do you think that the same uh, message which might get diffused in a big country of a uh, billion people can get amplified in a small country like Singapore and therefore uh, can uh, you know, turn this whole thing around? So uh, my question is both uh, to uh, Dr. Kasravali and to Mr. Ong, that do you think that uh, there is, uh, we need to also put it in the context of the size of the audience. So therefore the sensitivity might be much higher and, and we need to be more careful in, 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 a, in, a, in a place, in a small country versus a much, much bigger country. Uh, your first question is the balancing the, the commercial cinema with the more purposeful films, am I right? That is a question. But that is always a quest, and particularly when we evolve ourselves as a filmmaker. Like I have been making movies from uh, since 1975, when I made first film, Kalicha. My whole focus was it has to be hit. I don't care whether I give a message or not, you see, whether I. But uh, gradually, after having some success, I started feeling that there is a responsibility in me. I must do that. And then I started making my same commercial movies, whether they call the anti terrorism, or uh, then I produced by Iqbal and Jones Park and many other movies also produced and directed many movies. So you can involve yourself you know, you feel responsible. So there is always a quest today in my mind that yeah, I must make a film with a purpose as well as a single blockbusters. Blockbuster means that can I send my message through a interesting drama or through an interesting character, but can I convey all my latent messages, uh, latent internal messages in the film? Whether I made Yane that how my father father must become the friends to the daughters. Their relationship is, should not be so much 
uh, away from each other, that they don't do each other. They are daughter and father, but they don't talk throughout their life. So they have to be friends. So in, if you look at my movies, there is a definitely effort to convey a message, make it a more purposeful uh, film, which I made black and white. Uh, I don't know whether you have seen or not. It is about a suicide uh, bomber who comes to Chandni Chowk. But and he had to stay for 15 days. And when he sees the seven colors of the people of India, he changes his mind. He, he, he feels, you know, what I was taught in Taliban, India is not that. India is full of multicolor, multi people. So I put my point there in black and white. And the picture which I am making today is the Kanchi. Kanchi is a film about a girl from the mountain comes to Sydney to face, to fight against the power which is corrupt. And who have given the perception that the poor people must be, must not speak. We are the government. We are, we know how to deal with it. You are not nobody. And she tells them that I alone, I am a girl, I have some money. And she is a solo girl, 20 years old girl. And she inspires millions of youth of India. We are no even do what is right, fight for the right. She conveys this message in my film called Kanchi. This call is a young girl. So, but I am making also, I am making Thukka song also in it. I am making item numbers also. Because I am making funny characters of politicians or the billionaires giving them the color. Because I don't want to, you know, bore them. But finally when you come out of the film, you carry one message. I am carrying something with you. Because in the end, she asked the question. There is one song like, can I repeat sir? Yeah. In the verse says, Itna bada jahan hai, chalo dhoot laayin usko. Itna bada jahan hai, chalo dhoot laayin usko. Saare jahan se achha, wo hindustan kaha hai. So she put the question. All my life I have been singing Sara Jahan Se Achha Hindustan Hamara, but where is that India? I would like to ask the small girl us, the most powerful men of the country. So it is a commercial film, but it is a purposeful film also. So there is a quest in us, it's not that. But only thing that we are too much glued to commercial success also, and we are known as a commercial people. So we would like to speak in our own language, whatever we want to speak. Second question is for you, I think. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, as Aisa pointed out, uh, people came to watch Black and White because they had seen Kali Chela. They had seen Pardesh, uh, they had seen Tal, Ram Lakhan, things which we grew up on. So what, again, uh, the recipe here is, uh, you, if you have to get in a particular audience, or if you have to say something, then you have to use uh, your brand equity, right? So similarly, on a, very, on a much smaller scale, obviously, uh, when I made autograph by Shisham and Hamlaw Society, I did not know it would be such blockbusters because I don't think there is any recipe for a blockbuster. I genuinely feel you tell your story and then I hope that people like it. Uh, once people liked it, once I was a brand in Bengal, uh, there was this uh, company called Tripod, which is, uh, produced a film uh, made on a budget of uh, 12 lakhs. Uh, a film uh, which was entirely shot in uh, a Canon 5D with uh, great actors, uh, great candid performances, and it's a great film. Uh, it's called Bakita Bhakti Gautu. In fact, it's on Dalpan's uh, screening uh, list. So those who have not watched it might want to watch it. It is a truly, uh, it is it is truly an indie film in that sense. It's independent because it uh, it was made by a bunch of friends. Uh, who pulled in money together. 
uh, requested some actors, please act, we can't pay you. So that is how they put together a film which is fantastic. When uh, my friend who found the company driver came and told me about this film, I watched it and I said, I want to present this film. So what is happening because of that Srijit Mukherjee presence in the poster, they are getting an extra you know, spot on Shoghi Bangla, which is the primary uh, TV channel. They are getting that extra uh, uh, show at um, probably Nondon or South City. So I think that is how these two things can exist. Obviously, I will make my kind of cinema, but if there is someone else who is making a slightly different kind of cinema, and I like it, and I want people to watch more of that stuff, I should and I would lend my name or whatever equity there is and that is how, again, it will be a perfectly harmonious, uh, mutually peaceful coexistence. Thank you. Thank you. Well, after listening to your uh, question, I realized uh, we are speaking as though we are in India and we are talking only about Indian films. <laughs> and uh, you said India is a huge country and uh, Singapore is a small country. So, would you do the same thing in the same for of things? But I think uh, it doesn't uh, in any way relate to the population or the size of the country. It relates to the mental uh, you know, uh, status of the people. See, for example, in Sweden, you have a free, there is no censorship at all. This is a very small country. Whereas in a huge country like China, we have censorship. So it's nothing to do with the, uh, uh, with the size of the population. It's something to do with the culture. The, the, you know, so there are certain um, culture which accepts certain things. There are certain cultures which do not accept certain things. So I don't know how, what is the complexion of the Singapore society. So the room to be able to tend it better. Uh, that's all I know. Oh, very brief final. Okay. I, I. Okay, very quickly. Um, let me just say that uh, our leaders here in Singapore are very sensitive to, you know, many issues. Uh, ever since we were thrown out of a merger and left to kind of become extinct, you know, and we struggled to survive. Uh, the leaders here are very sensitive to racial issues because we have very serious racial riots, uh, which also re related to the religious factor as well. Uh, so anything to do with uh, <clears throat> values, culture, religion, or even politics, uh, our leaders are very careful about it. Uh, but to come straight to the point, what uh, the NDA is trying to do now is to have a, a very friendly re working relationship with the distributors. Uh, in that they give them the clear guidelines about what, how the rating will go. And the distributors will then, you know, decide whether they're going to submit that particular film for such and such a rating, or they'll first do their own cuts and then submit for a rating that would earn a larger audience. And I think uh, this experiment has been introduced about last six or nine months, and it's proving to be quite successful. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Now it's my present duty to ask Professor Jeffrey to uh, give very small tokens of appreciation to the panelists. Uh, I'm also going to ask uh, Shirsi Shen, uh, Chairperson Darpan, to give a vote of thanks. I'm going to make this very quick. I thank all of you for coming here on behalf of our fund. The turnout is so excellent and so encouraging. Um, thank you, panelists, and thank you for acceding to my request and all my questions for these two months uh, to be here all at the same time. And uh, most of the films that are chosen at our fund do touch on very, very pertinent social issues. They've been chosen delicately, a lot of care. Come and attend the festival, see the films, 
and I hope they raise the questions in your minds that Mr. Kastrabali has said they should. Um, all the details are here in the booklets and the brochures. So I look forward to seeing you at the festival to make it even a greater success.